Hi guys. Good test test. Thank you for the ongoing support. Financial Freedom Channel is doing really well. 102 subscribers up from quite literally two um, about two weeks ago. Getting a lot of views here, getting a lot of comments, a lot of support. Um, let's go into the charts, but thank you. Please like, please share, please subscribe and press the um, the little bell so you can get notifications on my um, on my uh, videos. So if you go to Bitcoin, um, let's just leave that up there. So I think Bitcoin's gonna 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 roll over here now. I I did event I did say these targets um, a while ago, but as is the case with trading, things can change. And as the price, as you get new price information, you need to start yeah uh, you need to start changing your opinions and where things may or may not go. So that's just the case with trading okay take it from myself i've lost a lot of money in the past with arrogance and ego and marrying a trade and you, you can't do that in this game if, if if you if you want to have a lot of those qualities then unfortunately trading's not for you and you, and you need to stick to the hamster wheel and um work for someone um because either you're an entrepreneur or you're working for one simple as that so you need you need to be flexible in this game as i've said what concerns me on the daily is this continued divergence here. I mean, we're really getting a lot of divergence here. We're getting newer highs, and we're getting some divergence. And this trend line is going to it's going to hit this at around eighty two hundred something. Then it's going to come back down. So, you know, those targets were from before, but things change. Um, maybe it'll break out of here. Might still hit nine thousand. I'm not sure. I did bring those targets down a lot from thirteen thousand. They were well out of sync. Um, Thought we were going to get an extended wave five and wave three, but we're not. So um, this looks as though it's the top of wave three right here. So we're going to come down to make a wave four. So as I said, you need to be flexible in this game. Trading is not about being right. It's about analyzing the price targets and taking the highest probable trade. Okay, so let me just pop that in in big letters. Okay, for highest probable trade. Okay, you can never be hundred percent, but in this game with technical analysis you can be well over 80 85 90 percent and therefore at that percentage you don't have to be right every time okay you can be right only four times out of ten and still make money in the long term there should only ever be three outcomes to any trade that you do a big win sorry a big gain a small gain or a small loss there should never be large losses and my Elliott Wave tutorial will help to explain that um, so uh, very quickly, you know, I don't want to spend too long on this, but one, two, three, four, A, B, C, expanded flat. Now it's going to go up in five waves, probably make a new high. And this is the this is the hourly. I don't like the hourly. I like the four hourly. Um, this is the hourly. So, you know, uh, di diminishing volume here. Poor, poor bullish bullish volume. I mean, it it, it could just roll over at any time here. But I've got it making up a new little high here. Maybe eighty two hundred something. I think yesterday I worked out a target of 8200. It's going to hit that line. And it's going to come back down. Um, but poor, poor volume here. There's just no follow through as well. I mean, it's getting really weak. You're getting divergence here on the four hourly. That's starting to roll over as well. Okay. Um, now, as I said, I'm, I'm going to start doing some some trading videos. I don't want you guys just to listen to what I say. I want you guys to actually learn something. So let's go into JNUG. Okay. Now. I want to just go over volume in this in this video. So today we're going to just talk about why is that all this come up? Um, what's going on here? Because um, we spent a lot of money, spent a lot of time talking about um, volume, but let's not forget about VSA. So that's volume um, spread analysis. Okay, and this was all uncovered by a chap called Wyckoff. So I'm a student of Wyckoff, as I am with Elliot. Let me just write the other two. The other one is Dow and Gan. Okay, so these were the four henchmen of the apocalypse back in the day and these were the four dons okay i use these two mainly gun i've done some work on gun and basically gun to summarize this if a price retraces 50 percent you buy that's basically gun in a nutshell and dow came up with the um with the dow theory okay um which is um interesting theory so um these are the four dons from back in the day the four horsemen so as I said, if you learn Wyckoff's analysis, Wyckoff's way of tr trading, Elliot, that is going to make you a lot of money, okay? And if you want to, you go over Dow, go over Gan. But if you had to choose two books to learn, it's Wyckoff and it's Elliot, okay? And I'll leave the links for the 
um, the Amazon links in the description down below. So please do click on that. Go onto Amazon and find the two books on Ralph Elliot and Wyckoff. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can go over Dow Theory if you get the time and can. So let's just go over. Um, let's try to an an analyze Jane Oak from a Elliot and Wyckoff perspective. Okay. So. Sometimes it can be difficult to uh, an analyze leverage GTS, but essentially you've got one, two, three, four, five down, yeah? So that's now the bottom, and our Jano is going to pop like a bastard. Now, the question is if you bought in here, was that the time to get in, and was that a long? Now, for various reasons, um, this was not the bottom, okay? First of all, in no way, shape, or form does this look impulsive. This is clearly a corrective pattern. So even if it, you knew nothing about volume, just simple Elliott wave would have told you that. I mean, that's a one, that's a two, that's an A, that's a B, C. There's no way that's impulsive. Okay, this looks very impulsive, and this is the start of a Jano trend, which will probably go well. The next support's here, isn't it? So 17.5, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of percentage, you're making a good 10, 20 percent. But I want to analyze this from a VSA perspective, okay? And I want to show you how Elliot and Vykov together can cause you to make a lot, a lot of money. Now, we spoke about buying climaxes before, and essentially, here, as it comes down, we get panic selling, panic selling, panic selling, then we have a boom. We get this massive selling climax where it's got really, really high volume, and it just dumps completely. And that essentially sets your range sets your horizontal range so what you want to do is grab this that's your bottom range and that's based on this heavy selling climax it doesn't have to be just the one candle it could be a collection of candles but generally speaking you'd get selling 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 boom it'll just go vertical right after the selling climax you get an automatic rally an AR and as you can see immediately it jumps up and that then sets the boundary there okay so Wyckoff says this is a why does it do that? I don't know why it does that. Maybe I have to make a new text box. Anchored text. Okay, I, I don't know why it don't know why it's doing that to be honest, but um maybe it's because I need to uh I mean I've already spoken about this so Right, okay, so that right there is your selling climax, okay? Now copy, paste, that right here is your AR, that's your automatic value, okay? Now, essentially, um, well, what you could probably label this as well if you like, um, visibility, so that's your upper range, yeah, and this is your lower range. So what Wyckoff said is the selling climax followed by the automatic rally. Generally speaking, it will produce your ranges, okay? And then price will then stay in between this range in this accumulation zone and then slowly slowly it all all the sellers all the weak hands will will sort of sell the large interest, the big corporations, hedge funds, they'll slowly undercover buy, undercover buy and then once all the supply has been exhausted, they've got all the shares, they'll then start the markup of the price, okay? But essentially, that's that's what it is, okay? Now, this automatic rally isn't always precise, but sometimes there can be another line above this, which is a bit of a resistance line. So we can draw that probably there, okay? Um, so that's not called upper range, that's just the um, resistance, okay? Right, so you have selling climax here, you've got the automatic rally, which, I mean, I've got it up here, but that's essentially labelling the right there. Then you've got this as the upper resistance, and then you've got here as a lower resistance. Now, what I want to show you is, is if you had bought in here, you should never buy in on the selling climax. You should wait and see how price responds following that level. Occasionally, you're right, though, a massive selling climax could very well be the start of a new trend. So there's no harm in putting at least 50% of your position down here. But generally speaking, that's just the start, and that sets out your two ranges. 
then price will stay in between this range. It might pop up above here, but right here you've got terrible uh, volume here. Like none of this is impulsive, high volume candles. These are just really low, shitty little candles that aren't really going anywhere. So these are just really traps, traps to then get more people to sell. Okay, and generally that's what trading. I mean that's what the um, the stock does. It just goes sideways now. What's really interesting is if you break it down even more, what happens is inevitably the price comes back to retest this low. Let's say there was a huge buyer here. Let's 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 call him John. Huge buyer John. What needs to happen is John, the big buyer, needs price to come back down to here to check are there any more sellers here? Because what the big hedge funds and corporations or the composite traders as Wyckoff used to call them what he doesn't want is for to mark the price up and then suddenly get a lot of sellers come in and then he's going to be caught with his pants down so what he needs to do is bring price down here now some people call it a shakeout Wyckoff called it a spring you can call it what you like but it needs to go down here and let's be honest any dumb person would leave their stop right here and so they're very sneaky what they do they mark the price down uh, purposefully to trigger all the stops and they want to test for supply supply means sellers are there any sellers down here is there anyone doing business on the short side down here as I've said to you guys before you need to think where does price need to go to shake people out one way or the other either to the upside or the bottom side and that's what we have here um, we actually have very dodgy low volume no supply candles that's what they're called okay and this candle here on the two hourly this candle right here on the 14th at half past eight uk time was a no supply candle this is where the big institutions mark the price down to test are there any sellers here okay and they do it as a low volume test and this test was um, well, it wasn't confirmed initially, but later on it was confirmed, and we'll get on to that, okay? But do you see how here it's less than the two candles before that? And that's what's called a no supply candle. The opposite is a no demand candle on the on a top of a bull trend, but this is the bottom of a bearish um, trend. But the volume of a no supply candle is usually as a doji. The spread is very tight, i.e. the difference between the open and the close and it's usually lower than the previous two candles okay and this is a great place to go long once you see it confirmed now what happened straight after it did not get confirmed okay now confirmation you need a break above a close above the high here so there were still some sellers here there wasn't sellers at this price then They've probably gone in to mark the price up. They've retested it down, and then suddenly more sellers have come in. But as you can see, as those sellers came in, they didn't stay there for too long. They got bought up by the composites, by the large hedge funds. They immediately bought it up, and that is a high volume hammer candle. Okay, so sometimes that happens. On other times, this no supply candle immediately gets confirmed, i.e., a close above the high here. In which case, that's your target to go in long. And if you bought in here. You would have made a good 10% on your money right from here. So Wyckoff is is unbelievable at figuring out on a real minor scale, you could time your entry literally to the to the cent if you know how to read candles right. And this is what they call form trading. You guys need to get good at reading candles and reading volume and analyzing things. Okay. And when used together with Elliot, it's powerful because no way does that look impulsive okay that just does not look impulsive so that means that must be a way for and here you can count five waves down one two one two three four three four five okay one two three four five done so if you were to combine Elliot and Wyckoff with volume you know that's the end of wave five so you could potentially have got in here but you'd rather analyze a bit of volume too and on an Elliott level, this was probably the start of the impulse. I reckon this was the initial state is one, two, one, two, three. Okay, but that's the Elliott side of things. So when used together, these two um, these two concepts are very very powerful. Um, and as I said, 
that was a good time uh, to buy but it's these little candles that that are the candles that you want to look for these really low volume less than the two candles before they mark the price below the bottom of the selling climax below the SC you can call it a shakeout they need to take out all of the stops all of the sellers anyone doing business on the short side they have to take those out now didn't get confirmed initially they marked the price back down suddenly loads of sellers came in but the composite traders bought all of their shares and they marked it back up back into this trading range okay then we've got a low volume and essentially this was your confirmation this candle here was the confirmation because it, this candle has closed above this high if you wanted to be extra safe you could wait for a confirmation of this entire hammer candle which was this candle here and that happened at half eight on the 15th so you know these are two hour candles so in the space of one two three four five in the space of about four or five hours well maybe six or seven hours you've got time to then buy in okay then the price goes up as you can see it retests this line retest this line but the buyers are coming in they're not letting the price touch this selling climax line again and then slowly slowly it goes up it goes up boom it's gone it's gone now it's gone and what's going to happen on jnub is it's going to hit the top part of this range and then correct and then it's going to bust out of the range at really high volume or it's going to hit the resistance then test this range make sure this automatic rally is then support and then it's going to go up but either way jnub is a really good buy right now um as i always say though please trade on your own volition this is purely just my own opinion but jnub is a very good buy um jnub is a good buy and it all sets off from this candle and then once you bring in elliot as well um you've got confirmation on so many levels i mean you've got one two one two that's a little triangle right there and then boom it's up in a way three so out of these these four horsemen as they call them okay if you were to only learn about Wyckoff and Elliot, and most of 90% of what I do is based on these two guys, um, you'll learn a hell of a lot. And honestly, your profitability will go up uh, massively. And if you get the time, read up about GAN if you wanted to and the Dow theory. But frankly, these two people have changed my life um, in terms of making money on trading. And that's essentially what it is. This is just pure accumulation. And then if you want to bring in some divergence i mean look at this this is just this is just textbook divergence okay so let's get this bad boy out of the way this bad boy out of the way let's analyze this in terms of divergence so very very simple price makes a sneaky newer low and there's divergence here so rsi is going up price is going down so and then if you wanted extra extra um confirmation okay macd is going up okay so on this level it's going up this level is going up volume we've analyzed elliott wave we now believe that this looks like an impulsive wave so there's about eight or nine different reasons well maybe not eight or nine but let's say we get one mark for divergence one mark for macd one mark for volume one mark for elliott we're at four here and let's say you know uh, we're looking i mean this is just just sort of arbitrary figures but essentially you want to tick box um as many things as you can that help you to confirm the trade i use the oscillators just to confirm what i'm reading okay i've only used the oscillators just to help show you that if you wanted that extra confirmation to get into this trade um you could use that and frankly JNOG is a very good long for so many reasons. I mean, gold's popping, dollar's going to collapse to 88. It's all it's all set in stone. And these kind of trades, um, you have to be patient for them, okay? The stock market, as a wise man said, is simply a means to, uh, what did you say? To transfer money from the impatient to the patient, okay? Once again, all these quotes them that I'm giving you this is purely from reading so I said knowledge is power okay um, and that's all it is that's all it is it's so all the stock market is I don't care if it's Bitcoin dollar JNUG you know oil that's all it is inpatient to the patient okay and you know you've 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 got to hold it you've you've got to 
look at the charts. You've 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 got to ana analyze volume, and sometimes you don't get it right. But if you were patient, even if you had bought in here, and you knew they were going to do a fake test, you could just widen your stop or not have a stop altogether. There are many times I don't even trade with a stop because I know what games they're going to play, and I'm so confident in the trade. Um, you could have added into your position here, and now Jane is going to go up. So. If you're trading it, investing it, you're swing trading it, anywhere here is a good place to buy. And your stop should now be below here, 14.35, okay? Um, so it's 1.2 divided by 15. So stock market is obviously not open today, but 7.7%, even if you were to buy here, your stop is 7.7%. But I reckon as a bare minimum, as a minimum, JNUG is going to go up to, let's say you buy here. Um, what would that be? There, 11.2, so you're getting a 1 to 6 um, risk reward. Yeah, that's not bad. Maybe it'll go up as high as 20, in which case you're getting 31%. Um, there's days when I've traded JNUG, and the next day, you wake up the next day, and it's gone up a ridiculous amount of percent because it's triple leveraged. And what I think is going to happen is JNUG's going to keep on going, as well as gold. Dollar's going to go inverse, and then before this week, this week's going to go up, this week, this week's going to go up, and then this week we're going to see a lot of volatility, okay? As I said, with Bitcoin and everything else, a lot of things are going to happen, but I reckon for the next three weeks, Bitcoin's going to come down, dollars, DXY is coming down, gold is going up, and JNUG's going up. So, but anyway, those are just my own opinions. Um, trade trade as you, um, as, as you like, but that's just the first sort of set of videos that I wanted to do, and I thought JNUG was a perfect... Um, sort of way to show um, accumulation and so I would urge you guys to have a look at Wyckoff mix in a bit of Elliot and honestly guys you're going to make a lot of money um, you're going to make a lot of money and this little candle here I mean this is so sneaky it's just so sneaky right here okay and less than the two candles before such a sneaky candle and all it's doing is testing the sellers okay as Wyckoff said, um, the stock market is simply is simply supply and demand. Okay, you you know it may, it's similar to property, you know grocery prices, car prices, whatever, anything. It's just an auction. That, that's all it is. It's just an auction between buyers and sellers, bulls and bears, and they're trying to figure out at what price can I shake out, shake out the uh, the bears on the short side, and at what price. High up, can I shake out the balls? And that's a, that's all it is. It's it's just the way of. It's it's fascinating actually how it how, how so much psychology plays a part in this game. But all it is, on a fundamental, basic level, is simply supply and demand, and that's all it is. And if you get good at candle reading and, you know, uh, form reading, um, Honestly, guys, your profitability will go up through the roof, and that's all there is. There's, there should only ever any trade that you do from now on, should only ever be three outcomes: big gain, small gain, and um, small loss. Okay, you should never, never have a big loss. Okay, if you're using tight stops, okay. As I said, I'm a very high risk trader myself. Okay, I'm, I'm extremely high risk. Um, I won't share with you some of the risks that I've taken, but um, I'm extremely high risk. So many times I have so much confidence in what I'm doing that I don't use any stops. But for you, for you guys, I would I would um, urge you guys to use uh, stops. Um, but these three are, are sh there should only ever be three outcomes to any trade that you do. This should never happen. If you're using Elliot, and we'll get onto that. If you're using Wyckoff, if you're analyzing volume and adding a bit of Oscillators. I mean, you guys can choose stochastic RSI, stochastics. There's the AD line. There's CHI, CCH, all kinds of other crap. These two are the best, to be honest. But you know, I don't use those other ones. Um, there's a guy on YouTube ready into his clouds, like likes his clouds. Um, I don't use clouds. They're all bollocks. Okay, volume is the most leading price indicator that you can have. Okay. Um, but this bottom line, this should never happen. This should never, never happen. Okay, and if you're trading correct using Elliott, Wyckoff, Volume, and these oscillators, you can easily get out of a trade when you've called it wrong. Okay, so 
this is the first sort of off the cuff um, video I'm doing on trading. I saw this JNUG setup last night. As I said, I mean, I'm, I'm quite limited with my job um, uh, in terms of uh, an analyzing this because you have to be ready for this. But it's it's this candle. That's all it is. That was your way in. Okay, it didn't immediately confirm, but this candle did. And if you wanted to be extra safe, you buy in on a test of this candle. And then once it's retested, this there's no way JNUG has any business going anywhere near here again because the big hedge funds, the composite traders have absorbed all the selling, all the supply, and now it's just going to go up. There will be very low volume red candles here. Okay, This you might think is low volume, but as you can see, it's less than the candles here. And Jano is going to just do this, piss about, hey, maybe do that, then do this, and then boom, it's gone. It's gone. And, he, and you're not going to see it again. And the minimum it's going to go to is, as I said, it's going to go up 17 here. Um, and on a trade like this, personally, I don't even use a stop loss because I'm so con convinced by it. I've seen this setup so many times. Um, but anyway, hope you guys like that video. Um, I want to do more trading videos. I don't want you guys just to take my tips and, and, and go into the market. I want you guys to actually learn. Okay, Don't, don't make the same mistakes I made. I, I, I used to use uh, Financial Times. I used to watch Bloomberg, CNBC. Then I realized after seven, eight years, it's all bollocks, okay? Um, and as a, a great trader, Jesse Livermore once said, it takes five years to understand the market. It took me seven and a half years, so hopefully take you guys a, a lot sooner. Um, I will be looking to do live stream videos, webinars, as well as um, seminars in the near future around Easter time in the UK. And hopefully, um, if that's something that you guys would like, uh, please let me know um, in the comments. And... Uh, I've got two links to Amazon UK, Amazon um, uh, US. Please do use those links and um, have a look. And uh, as as I said, it's it's um, it's uh, it's um, these two, these well these these four horsemen. And if you get the time, cover these two. But one hundred percent, you need to know about Wyckoff and you need to know about Elliot and. Find books on Amazon, use my links, and um, as I said, famous quote, I'll just leave that up there for you guys. The stock market is a means transfer money from impatient to the patient. And those who are patient make money. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that video. A little bit different to what we usually do. Uh, please like, please share, please subscribe. Let me know what you think. This is something that you wanted me to, to do more of. And um, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you.